We've heard some crazy things recently. Some investors saying this market reminds them of 1987. Others saying it's the months right before Lehman's bankruptcy. But our next guest thinks this is a little bit more like the bull run that lasted from 1982 through the year 2000. Neil Hennessy is the CIO and a portfolio manager at Hennessy Funds and joins us now to discuss. Uh, so Neil, let's just talk about the overall thesis. Um, is this bull market still intact? And do you see uh, us getting through this period of volatility that we've endured really for the last 18 months now? Yes, I think it is. Uh, the bull market's intact. If you go back to 2010 and you look at the amount of corrections we've had since 2010, we had uh, 14 of them were between five and 10 percent, and there were six that were between 10 and, and I mean 10 and 20 percent. With the fourth quarter of last year being down 19.7 percent, but those were all corrections. They were over very very quickly. When I look at the marketplace, it reminds me of that 1982 through 2000 market where we continued to grow. But in, during those times, you were still having people uh, doubt the the extent of the bull market. In those 18 years, the market was only down one time, and that was 1990 when it was down one half of one percent. And in those markets, you saw 21 and a half percent interest rates, 18 percent inflation. You saw the uh, real estate market collapse at the end of the 80s, the 90s. You had the market go down 25 percent in one day in 1987. And then clearly, at the end of the 90s, what you got into was euphoria. And the euphoria was the easiest way to make money is to buy dot com stocks, and that's it. You don't have to work, you don't have to inherit money, you don't have to do anything. And that was when euphoria hit the market and the market collapsed. And when you look at today's market, there's absolutely no euphoria in it. And so when I look at just the fundamentals uh, that are out there, I clearly cannot see why the headlines are, well, we've been in a bull market for 10 years, it's, it must be over. There's no rhyme or reason to have any kind of, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, any kind of uh, impact on the downside. So we're, we're missing a rational exuberance at this point, and then if we are in something that's more analogous to 1982 to 2000, that would mean uh, a mid-cycle adjustment. We, we really are in, in the middle here. Uh, your note uh, is, the, I think, the third this week that talked about buybacks that um, I read having an impact on what's going to be able to be a catalyst to push us forward. You note that there's roughly $5.2 trillion uh, combined for S&P 500 companies right now. There's plenty of room for more corporate buybacks, and that has to do also with the Fed lowering rates here. Is that uh, part of your thesis of why we're going to go higher, and is that necessarily a, a good reason to go higher here based on buybacks? Well, the latest, the latest headline out there is uh, recession, and, and you're looking at interest rates, and then we had an inverted yield curve, and that doesn't have anything to do with it. The bottom line here is if you look at the fundamentals, we have very low unemployment. We have 30-year mortgage paper under 4%. You have a 2.25% 30-year U.S. government bond. Interesting enough, the Dow Jones, those 30 stocks, yield 2.25%, the same as a 30-year U.S. government bond. You look at $5.2 trillion on the S&P 500 company's balance sheets, there's plenty of room not only for corporate buybacks, but dividend increases in capital expenditures. But the, the, the head Headlines are just getting recycled. It's a tariff in China. It's North Korea. It's it, they're so it, they just come back and around. And, and essentially, what's happening is you're having the traders trade the market. But the fundamentals for companies out there mm -hmm. are very, very solid. You know, Neil, let's talk about uh, one company quickly caught my eye. American Eagle is a name that you like. Um, we've talked a lot about the strength of the consumer. Just look at that name specifically. Uh, retail has had uh, kind of a mixed period here, to say the least, of the last few years. What do you like there? Well, one of the things that we look at are the metric, the most valuable metric for us is the price to sales ratio, because that's really telling us what a company's doing. You can look at a P.E. ratio, but you can mess around with earnings from quarter to quarter, just like an individual can at the end of the year take a gain or take a loss. But price of sales is a true number unless you're actually cooking the books. And when you look at American Eagle and you look at their lineup and you look at the price of sales, right now it's selling at 80 cents on the dollar. They earn a dollar 62 approximately and they pay 55 cents in dividends. So there's a lot of room to increase that dividend. There's a lot of room to see that uh, price to sales ratio go from 0.8 to 1. So a dollar for revenue, 
for a dollar in price. And, and so when I look at American Eagle and you look at the consumer, and, and, and Ryan, your latest uh, guess was absolutely correct. The consumer is very, very strong. The consumer confidence is up, and why not? Mm -hmm. Wages are up, inflation is down, and everybody seems to be employed. And those are three good things for retail. All right, Neil Hennessy with Hennessy Funds. Thanks so much for joining us.